Jared Anderson needs to grow up a little. Apparently, um, February, he got pulled up for leading the cops in a high-speed chase. And you have to ask, well, why was he doing that? And then in November last year, he got hemmed up on improper handling of a firearm. 24 years of age, he's got a baby on the way. He said it was during the pandemic, 2020-2021, when his enthusiasm started to sour for the sport. And he was out there having fun, is how he explains it. And he has some points, you know, about the cutthroat nature of the sport. But this is what you've chose to do. You've got to buckle down. And he himself said he can't be a part-time boxer when he wants to. He's got to be locked in 24-7 to his career. Bob Aram said they're targeting fights like Deontay Wilder, Zhilei Zhang and Joseph Parker. Anderson said he respects Wilder. He's got a hell of a punch. But he says he's too rounded as a boxer. And that Wilder can't beat him. He'll leave it at that. Well, he's got to perform against this Riyad Mary Saturday. Taking that for granted. Bob Aaron would probably like to keep a Wilder fight in America. But the Saudi money may dictate where it goes eventually. And that's something they've been lacking over there. Is them... American domestic front clashes. They used to do them in the 80s all the time. And they still do them. They still do them. But something like Anderson versus Wilder would be absolutely huge. And yeah, the Saudis would want it. But that's what you want. You want to make fights what the Saudis want to take from you because the matchup is so appealing. And if you decide to keep them in America, so be it. You're going to make money anyway. And also rebuild your infrastructure. That'd be a huge fight over there. The young lion coming for the old lion's territory. Whew. It's not a good fight for Wilder though. Because while Anderson struggled against Charles Martin not too long ago, he still got the higher learning curve. And what does Wilder have to gain? That's what he's going to ask himself. But if they can put enough money in front of Wilder, whether that's top rank ESPN or the Saudis, then we'll see. I mean, it was money that got Wilder beaten last year. He wasn't going to fight last year. But that check they put in front of him for that Joseph Parker fight put him in the ring. And I'm not making excuses for him, but he wasn't prepared for that fight. And it's not just a matter of having enough time to prepare. Malik Scott has to prove it to me that he's the right man to train Deontay Wilder. I had to pull over my car for this one. So right now, my previous promotional contracts has expired. My team are doing their job back end to negotiate the best deal for me going forward. Once that's all sorted, me and you can start our negotiations for the fight. To put on the fight for the fans and ourselves, because I know we want to fight each other. It's exciting times. Well, the fact that Anthony went on social media to let us know that he is technically a free agent says it all. If things were all roses with him and Frank... He would have kept this information confidential until something was sorted, whether he was going back with Frank or not. So they're at least considering options outside of Queensbury, is what it tells me. A recent post that I read from Anthony Yard, he was on holiday and he was saying, when people I respect and have been loyal to are losing my respect because they're telling lies and are not getting their own way, I sip my coffee. He's talking about Frank. I don't see him going to top rank. Could do, but... With Frank's relationship with Bob Aram, I doubt it. With Frank's relationship with Eddie right now, I don't see him going to Matrum. I'm going to write the Matrum option off. There's obviously the PBC in America. But if we're just looking at the UK, it could be Wasserman or Ben Shalom. The latter would make the Boatsy fight very easy to make. And of course, him, Tunde and Frank can shake hands and make up and continue. Who knows? A lot of outside parties are putting things in boxers' ears. I'm not going to blame Ben Shalom for this situation, but there was a lawsuit over Boatsy and his move to boxer from Matram. And if he has destabilized Joshua Boatsy with an illegal move, and now Boatsy has not only turned down a world title fight, he can't get significant fights done right now. Do you think Ben really cares? He has his own vendetta and his own agenda. And Joshua Boatsy comes second to all of that. Ben Shalom and Sky Sports. You did a few interviews, including with myself, where he said he hadn't received anything. This was about a week ago, so I imagine things have progressed since then. We can't just send a contract and there's nothing on the other side. We've agreed the terms. In fact, uh, Josh texted me last night, asked me what's happening. 
which was a bit of a bolt out of the blue for me, but that came in. Uh, but the bottom line is, until uh, we get the situation sorted out with what Anthony wants to do, we can't move any forward. How confident are you? You feel that like that one can get over the line, and if it doesn't, how long can you wait until you have to start planning for Anthony's future? Oh, we're not going to wait long. You know, we're either going to do it or we're not going to do it. That's going to be him and his team's choice. Both parties obviously frustrated with each other. Frank revealing that Boazzi text Frank to find out what was happening. Let's hope Yard doesn't get bogged down and caught up in a situation where politics is keeping him out of the ring for any longer than need be. There's big fights for him out there and this is the time for him to take him. As for Boazzi, I explained when he turned down that Bivol fight, it might seem like the right idea turning down your title fight but then other things can happen after that you're preparing to take another big fight then you get injured your opponent gets injured politics get in the way again and next thing you know you're like well what the fuck happened there and he needs a significant fight Joshua Boazzi and so does Yard but it seems like there's something always in the way for either of them to get a consistent run of fights which is what they need at this stage here they're both in their 30s still trying to arrange a domestic clash between the two this is a fight that has been spoken about being made for at least five years minimum. Yard, what's going on, man? Look, we've got a safe venue, a stadium. We've got a date. What's the delay? What's happening? I'm out here working, man. Let's go. Let's make it happen. Y'all don't want to get sidelined because, like, when he says he's a free agent, what does that mean? Why can't he just go directly to Ben Shalom if he's a free agent? But there's obviously more logistics to it than what we know. But Waxy said they've got the location and he said a stadium and a date. Let's go. Every now and again, a fighter comes along that is very, very special. I know. Y'all been waiting for this. It's been a minute. He has all the potential to be a superstar of American sport. I had to make sure my next move was the move. And it's time to show the world just how great he is. Boots times match from baby. Let's get it. Welcome to the best team in boxing, to the world welterweight champion, Jerron Boots Ennis. Forget all the other politics. This was the right move just for the activity alone he will get at Matram in comparison to what's been going on at the PBC. Okay, he wasn't a PBC fighter, but he fought on their cards, for the most part. I think this move has destabilised the market in America for the better. Guys like Cody Crowley. Well, how's he going to get his shot now at the likes of Terence Crawford or Boots Ennis? Crawford is a free agent. Should be easy technically to make a fight between Crawford and Ennis. What fights or dates did the PBC have for Crowley? If necessary, they should let him go over to the zone and take that fight with Boots. Of course they should. It's irresponsible not to. PBC just lost the purse bid for Cody Crowley against Suleiman Sissoko to the French outfit. Not even the zone to the French outfit. They probably didn't bid that much and they probably don't care either. They got no dates for him. That's an eliminator for one of the 147 pound straps, the WBC. 147 was a hotbed at the PBC. They don't have no straps there no more. Nothing, nothing at all, except Stanionis and Barrios with their baby belts. I hope them step aside checks were good for Stanionis because he gave up a lot expecting a shot at something. Now there's no belts over there. There's no belts. He's going to be looking at this and saying, what the fuck? So what's out there for boots? Matram will be open to all parties to make these fights. Giovanni Santillian, top rank. Won't be hard to make that fight. Conor Ben, who they're talking about. Next up is a first defence for Boots. Virgil Ortiz, golden boy. Easy fight to make. You mustn't be short-sighted. Matram have a plethora of light welters. Devin Haney, Matthias, Sandor Martin, who could all potentially move up and fight Boots. At 154, Israel Madrimov is there awaiting a big fight, whether that's Terence Crawford or if Boots wants to move up. The fights are there. The fights are there for Boots. Don't worry about that. A lot of people are saying this was a bad move. No, it was not a bad move. The fights are there for Boots. And Eddie needs to remember what he said about housing fighters in their hometowns. Yes, make Boots a star in Philly. 
Open that market up there. Let Boots be the face of Philly. It's a huge potential market. It has to be. I believe Boots will be undisputed at 147 if we can make it happen. And 54. I think he can beat Terence Crawford. That's the fight that I want to push to make. Is this the best your US stable's ever been? Yes. Yeah. I mean... Like summer for you. I've got to tell you, we are talking to four or five fighters that are all, I think, pound for pound top ten. But worst case scenario, pound for pound top fifteen. So and Crawford's in there. The we're on fire, and if we want to do it, we could gather signings that will just put us on another level. But what I don't want to do, Parsons, is give false promises yeah, yeah, yeah. and tell people you must box three times a year and they end up boxing once because that's happened time and time again and it's not what we're about. What you're seeing now is the fallout from Fox and Showtime bailing out on the PBC. Matthias, IBF 140 pound champion and Boots, IBF 147 pound champion have all defected over to Matram and DAZN. And now the likes of Eddie... And Bob Arum, they're going to have to kind of like um, pick and select carefully who else may defect, want to defect from over there because they don't have the dates at Amazon to accommodate and keep all these fighters happy. And although the zone have a lot more dates than Amazon do, they can't over flood the place with all these new signings. As attractive and tempting it might be, they can be too much of a good thing. So they've got to select carefully who else wants to defect from the PBC and go over there. Can't take everybody. I'm sure Oscar De La Hoya, he's waiting to pounce. Bob Arum waiting to pounce. If that Showtime and Fox money was still there, Eddie would have found it way harder to acquire both fighters. But yeah, it's a great situation. An opportunity for Eddie to bolster that stable, that US stable. And like he said to um, Parsons, who asked him, is this the best your US stable has looked? He went, yes, automatically, yes. And it's kind of looking crazy. Who you got? Pro Grace, Haney, Boots, Matthias. And when we say US, they don't have to be fighters born in the US. We're talking about fighters who predominantly have fought in America. And in that clip, he said there's, what was it? Five or six, pound for pound, top 15, consensus, who want to join Matram, who want to be on that design platform, who want Eddie Hearn to promote them. Go on, I was just, I'm, I'm about on. to jump in there. I've just thought about something else, just away from this card. Talk to me about Chev Clark, your yeah, mates at Boxer. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, look, they said it wasn't them and it was Mick Hennig. I don't really care who it was. I'm just saying, don't mess with a fighter's career because we've been waiting for two months for that fight to be called to purse bids. And for two months, we presumed we were fighting Isaac Chamberlain, right? Chev was supposed to fight in March or April. But we've had to wait because that fight got ordered. To pull out an hour before the purse bid, it's just frustrating. Like, if, if you really are doing it to go the European route, like, against Sislak, I mean, who cares about Isaac Chamberlain against Sislak? What people care about is Isaac Chamberlain against Chef Clark in a great domestic fight. And yes, that's the fifth one on the spin, but I get it, like, we're operating an elite stable. Every one of those five fights that were ordered, we would have won. So, of course, I want them. Yeah. But if, you, if you're not ready or you're not good enough, just pull out and let the fighter move on with his career. So that's more the frustration. And now we're looking to make Chef Clark for the British title and hope to make an announcement today. It was always obvious they were going to try and use the Mick Hennessy thing to get Ben out of the firing line when Isaac's last three fights have been promoted by Ben Shalom, not Mick Hennessy. Mick Hennessy is not the official promoter at Sky. Mick Hennessy is there to help Ben fill out his boxer cards with his fighters, like Stevie McKenna. I don't think Savannah Marshall is over there no more. I don't even think Savannah Marshall's boxing right now. She's throwing people all around the place and blocking kicks. To Eddie Hearn, it's not 5-1, it's 6-1. And like I said yesterday, they could put Ben in the firing line for all this crap. But the bottom line is... Ben doesn't determine what goes on that screen. Sky Sports can veto anything Ben puts up there and there's nothing Ben can do. Whether you want to blame Sky, Mick Hennessy or Ben Shalom, you're all in the same gang. Stop killing my brother because we're all from the same gang.
Obviously the news came out this morning, about an hour till Percival's were meant to be called Isaac Chamberlain vacating his British title. We know obviously you were the mandatory there. Sort of your initial thoughts when you found out? I found out when you guys found out. I listen, I don't care who I fight. Isaac is not the target. Winning the, the British is the target and that's still on course to be taken. To be fair, I wouldn't want to fight me either, so... Siobhan Clark, not phased at all. Why would he be phased? He's only had eight fights. And he's already up there talking about fighting for British titles and bigger. He was probably half expecting this anyway. I think it's atrocious that the board have not stepped in and said, well, why are you holding up the process? If you've got something against Eddie, why are you bringing the fighters that Eddie promotes into it? What have they done to be asked around waiting for you to vacate belts and don't turn up at the purse bid? Like, this is why Mick Hennessy hasn't got anywhere. He heard that Eddie or representatives from Matrum went to Cardiff, yeah? Went all the way to Cardiff to make the bid to find out that Isaac had vacated one hour before. Here, Mick Hennessy, oh, you need to go see your post office about that. You can make the bid by post office. And the way Eddie replied said it all why Eddie started way later than Mick Hennessy and is way more successful. You're doing your bid by post office. And Eddie said, what if the post mess up? And don't get the bid there in time. We go there directly and make the bid. Unprofessional, Mick. That's what it is. If you're taking the blame, take it. When you cross dudes used to tell me, it's shabby, it's shabby. Yeah, yeah, you might look shabby. <laughs>